There is a large building in the center of downtown Oklahoma City, one of the most iconic buildings uh, of the skyline. It's the first national center. There is a sale pending on that, and it seems like that's been among the headlines for several years. Here with an update on what's new on that famous structure from the Oklahoma's business desk, Steve Lackmeyer, and you have some new details of the sale pending here. Yes, this has been the big mystery in town. We've been trying to find out who this potential buyer is. We have seen First National Center change hands uh, three or four times in the last 20 years, and the ownership has gotten progressively worse. They come in with promises. They come in saying they're going to restore it to its former glory, and we end up worse for wear when everything's said and done. Uh, we don't even know who owns the building right now due to all sorts of litigation and craziness involving the supposedly previous owners, or maybe they're not the previous owners, Aaron Yashafar and his group, or maybe they were the owners until March and they lost control through a Marshall's auction to a disgruntled investor, or it's owned by the Neiman Brothers who supposedly bought it from Yashafar. If all that makes sense to all of you, you get an A+. Plus. For those of if, you playing along at home, Yes, right? if you don't, don't worry about it. It's fine. What, all you need to know is U.S. District Judge Stephen Fry is a hero in this matter. He has separated all that craziness from the sale of the property. Chatting here with the Oklahoman Steve Lackmeyer with an update on the First National Center. And, and Steve, you've talked to the owner. Does he have a name and what is he telling you? His name is Stephen Goodman. And yes, I have talked with him. You picked uh, up the phone the old fashioned journalistic reporter way and you spoke to the source. I also sent an email. Well, well done. It is the uh, digital age after all. Uh, but yes, uh, we had a great conversation. He's been keeping up with all the uh, different reports that are going on. And we do have some clarifications as to what is and is not happening. We are definitely looking at a closing in late July, early August. He talked about watching a literal soap opera going on involving uh, the legal battles and skirmishes that have gone on the last couple of years over its ownership. He's quite happy that's coming to an end. And uh, he's got quite a bit of experience. He's doing projects in Nashville. I was about to ask he's, you, after the Steve Steve Summit here over the phone, what have you learned about this Yes, guy? he's doing projects or similar in Nashville, in Cleveland. He specializes in tackling troubled older properties and uh, totally redoing them and doing adaptive reuse. He must have some backing or some money, right? Yes, he does. It's a pretty large hedge fund. We're talking a couple billion dollars with a B. Wow. Uh, so yes, he's got backing, uh, but this project isn't cheap. Financially, you know, there will be some uh, discussions that will follow because this is a very challenging property. Turns out it still has some asbestos in it, despite what we've been told by prior owners. So they will have to remove that. Uh, also, some good news for tenants, despite what they're being told. We're not looking at a 60-day eviction after it closes. He said they're not looking at anything happening for at least 60 days after they close because they want to have it listed on the National Register of Historic Places. They want to uh, look at tax credits, some other assistance in dealing with this troubled property. Makes some business sense. Yes. Uh, his, their aspirations are for a four-star hotel. Uh, they uh, look at having very high-end apartments on top of that where they would share services with the hotel, valet, dry cleaning, uh, room service, maid service. Uh, they're wanting to have the finest hotel in the city. They want to have the finest uh, housing downtown. Uh, they would have rooms overlooking the Great Banking Hall. This is quite an ambitious project. We're not looking at the kind of band-aid approach that we've seen other owners promise and then not deliver on. He knows this building is overdue for a complete overhaul. That's what I was about to ask you, Steve. You've been following this and reporting on this for years. Is this just another turn of the crank or are you hearing something different now? City officials assure me this is the real deal. Certainly has more experience than what we've seen in the past. We've heard promises of real deals before. Sure. This gentleman seems to understand that history. Uh, 
I don't get the sense that he's going to wait long. He's actually been working on this now since 2013. Actually, his attention to this property first uh, started back when Aaron Yashafar still owned it, or at least when he claimed to own it. That's a whole other story as far as who owned it, who owns it now, and all that. But putting that aside, back when Aaron Yashafar was battling foreclosure, in 2012 and he had wanted to have nothing to do with that back then he wanted clear title and he didn't want to, have to deal with that so now he's ready to buy it it looks like there's clear title to be had and he's going to work through that but he's worked on this a long time it turns out he's even spent quite a bit of time talking with the state historic preservation office very quietly to look at what needs to be preserved what is the appropriate changes that need to be made to this building and to make sure they're being respectful and can work with the National Park Service guidelines that oversee uh, a building that's on the National Register of Historic Places. It may surprise many that this building is not on that list. It surprised me when you just said that. Yeah, uh, the Scriven is on that building. There are properties on uh, Auto Alley. Uh, but no, this one has never gotten on the list. So uh, this will be really special to get that listed. Front page news from the Oklahoman Steve Lackmeyer. And I'll also mention you have a sidebar uh, in the Oklahoman about some of the tenants. And you yes. followed up on that end. I've talked to Jane Jenkins, president of downtown Oklahoma City, Inc. And there's a lot of confusion and a lot of worry upon uh, what's going to happen with the tenants. The tenants don't know what's going on. They've not had any communication with the buyer. There was uh, quite a bit of communication going on the last couple of days with the building management that works for the California entity that at least controls this property. Again, a judge says, a federal judge says, we don't know who owns this property, so I'm not gonna say we know who owns it. We just know it looks like it's gonna have different ownership soon. <laughs> but that's been a big concern is the building management, at least according tenants, has told them that they're gonna be given a 60-day notice once the building sells. Well, again, we now know it'll be longer than that. But they're still very worried. We now know where the St. Anthony's Physicians Clinic will be moving to. That'll be to uh, Century Center. Meanwhile, Jane Jenkins is working with these tenants, working with downtown brokers, and trying to figure out, okay, where can we put these folks on a temporary basis, or where can we find permanent space for these folks? Because these are all really valued retail tenants. We're talking about clothing stores. We're talking about a tag agent. We're talking about gift shops. We're talking about restaurants. We're talking about a really good mix of retail that has survived all sorts of neglect and really uh, some abuse by the string of bad owners it's had over the years. So uh, downtown Oklahoma City Inc. is stepping up to the plate and we're learning more about where some of these tenants will go. So moving and shaking, going on the skyline of Oklahoma City with the First National Center. More coverage on this topic can be found by this guy, Steve Lackmire in the Oklahoman online at newsok.com. He has a little blog you might follow at okccentral.com and of course on Twitter. Steve, nice work. Thanks for the updates. Thank you very much.